I had to wear black for this episode because the episode's called Double Black. And as you can read here, I am internally screaming because it's episode nine of Bungo Stray Dogs. I'm Romania Black. And uh, I, I love this season. <laughs> I, the last two episodes, aside from the flashback arc, episodes three and four, um, episodes three and four, and then seven and eight, these four episodes in season two have been my favorite in the whole series. Um, episode 12 of season one is probably up there too. But, oh my gosh. Just the last two episodes, uh, the flashback arc had such an atmosphere and the animation and soundtrack and everything was beautiful. These last two episodes have done kind of the same thing. The animation's been gorgeous. The lighting, the colors, everything. The soundtrack, it's all been so darn good. And this three-way war between the Port Mafia, the agency, and with the... Um, the guild has been absolutely wonderful. Like I've loved the back and forth. And then last episode, our boy, our wear tiger at sushi, he got an idea, an awful idea, an awful, wonderful idea to join, to form an alliance between the port mafia and the agency, which is hilarious because Dawes, I had just been contacted by the port mafia to come back and work for them. So, you know, Mori right now is like twiddling his, fingers together, twiddling his thumbs and being like, I'm getting what I want. And that's pretty much going to be it. How, oh my gosh, how this is going to go down is going to be interesting to see how this alliance works. I can see some of the agency maybe not being on board with this idea, but at this point, the guild is enough of a threat that I don't think they have a choice. I wanted to point something else out about the guild, though, about two of its members specifically, a K.A., uh, who comments on YouTube, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. I absolutely fangirled when I found this out. But the characters of Steinbeck and Lovecraft of the Guild, they're two of my favorite characters. I think they're my favorites in the Guild. And I just found out through this YouTuber, K.A., that uh, the voice actor for Steinbeck is the same voice actor for Yahaba, who is the setter on Seijo's team in IQ. The voice actor for Lovecraft is Kiyotani, who's the hitter <laughs> for Seijo in IQ. So these two characters that often get shipped together in IQ, that I personally ship together hardcore, are the voice actors for Lovecraft and Steinbeck. So I don't know. I need to go after this and just start drawing um, Yahaba in Steinbeck's outfit and Kiyotani in a trench coat and just do some fan art because that's just sending me. I'm like, yes, that's amazing that those voice actors are together and no wonder they have such great chemistry. Of course they do. But yeah, I I am so excited for this episode. I We are officially building towards the climax of this season and this season's been awesome. I have loved season two of Bungo Stray Dogs. Uh, Y'all told me, you're like, season two is gonna be better than season one. You weren't lying. So I'm so excited, double black. Uh, the only new characters who really got introduced in the last episode was Huckleberry Finn, uh, or was, yeah, Mark Twain. And Mark Twain, he's got Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, which are like his little guiding things. And I, I didn't really see the need to research Huck Finn and, and Tom Sawyer. They're, I mean, very similar. Mark Twain liked to write a lot about, like, Midwestern on the on the riverbanks, stories about coming of age and, and everything there. So I, someone commented that the mangaka seems to really delve more into like the literary works because they're probably more familiar with them, the literary works of the Japanese characters, the, off, the characters based off Japanese authors, whereas the guild members, their characters are kind of just portrayals of the stories themselves, which I'm totally fine with. Like Fitzgerald... I said Steinbeck and Lovecraft were my favorite guild members, but Fitzgerald's right up there with them because he is he is Jay Gatsby. If Jay Gatsby was a supervillain, that's Fitzgerald. <laughs> and I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I noted this before, but I'm curious if Fitzgerald has a daisy because if there's a daisy in his life, I'm very curious. So curious indeed. But we found out that Gein is a girl. Found that out last episode, back in episode seven, that Gein's a girl. Um, we've had revelations about lots of things in this season. Oh my gosh. But I'm just ready to start the final towards the climax of this season. I'm so curious if they're going to wrap everything up this season with the guild or if it's going to bleed over into season three. That's the question. That is the question, my friends. But I've wasted enough time. Let's dive into this. We are going to start episode nine of Bungo Stray Dogs. Technically episode 21 overall. Double black here in five, 
four, three, two, one, and let's go. Holy cow. Oh, I was so frustrated because Crunchyroll was being really slow tonight. It wasn't my internet. It's Crunchyroll for some reason. And so it kept lagging and I kept having to stop and start this whole episode. And I was so frustrated, but so worth it because I'm sorry if I wasn't very talkative during that reaction, but I just wanted to sit there and watch this all go down. And so much went down. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. We have to go back through it because there's a lot at work here. A lot at work here. So we start off the episode, obviously going back to that sushi, wanting to form the alliance, having the idea to form the alliance uh, with with the Port Mafia. And, and then we establish that the president is a fan of cats. Because he has this cat trip walking around and he just tries to lure the cat in and it walks away. He's like, hmm. But, which is kind of funny because if you think about it, he took Atsushi in. And Atsushi's kind of a human cat. So, <laughs> so the, the president took a liking to Atsushi and it's like, oh, is it because he's a walking cat? Is that a human, uh, anthropomorphic cat? Is that why? Is that why you did that, president? Okay, Fukunawa. Yeah, we need to talk about this. Fukunawa being the president. Oh my gosh. So, um, before we get to the infamous meeting of Mori, of Mori and the president, I, I like that Dazai's like, oh, I've hurt my arm and I don't want to do things. And Kunikido's like, look, the town was saved from annihilation thanks to you and Atsushi. That's great and all, but you still need to get up and do things. Like, what's going on? And then, of course, the president comes in. And Kunikita, I wondered if people knew that Dazai had been in the Port Mafia, but apparently it's not, you know, a $100,000 yen question anymore. Everybody knows or knew except Kunikita. Or maybe he was just joking and no one else knew and he just wanted to poke fun at Kunikita. And so I like the president's like, so we've got our secret meeting with the Port Mafia. And Dazai's like, yep, getting all arranged. And Kunikita's like, this wasn't in my book. This isn't right. This isn't good. No, no, no. And of course, Dazai's like, well, yeah, they're going to, they're not going to turn away this opportunity. It's a perfect chance for them to kill you. And the president, again, says, I don't care as long as they direct their attacks towards me and not my members. So that's interesting that multiple times the president has said, I want you all, I want attacks targeted to me, not anybody else. So I'm curious with his ability, and we don't know it yet. But I'm curious to know what all is going. I also like that Maury and the president, their color schemes are total opposites. Uh, the president is in greens and Maury's in red, which they are opposite colors on the color wheel. So that's interesting to me. But yeah, I love the Kunikita freak out where, where Daz is like, I don't want to talk about it. And Kunikita is like, you didn't say anything. Why, why are you scheduling the meeting? He's like, well, I used to be in the Port Mafia. And then, so the cat's out of the bag. Everybody knows Dazai's past now. Or if they didn't, Kunikita's going to spill the beans. So I love that Kunikita's the one that's left out of the loop. It's amazing. And Dazai's like, well, I'm originally from the Port Mafia. <laughs> it's just, everybody knows it except you. I, I love it. I love it. So then, of course, now this part here, I couldn't pause it and like focus on things because things were happening, but we have all these black coffins with all the bodies in them, and that company at the top has a big M and says Mori Companies. So interesting that, so I'm w wondering if that's an organizational thing he's developed while being the leader of the Port Mafia. There have been over 100 deaths in our organization alone. And then him and Chuya together being like, I hate to admit it, but if that tool, Dazai, had neutralized the curse, we would have had ten times as many casualties. I have no face to show to the previous bosses. Meaning, like, like this all happened on my watch. Like, I should have, if Dazai, Dazai should, Dazai's the reason that we're all saved, him and Atsushi. He doesn't mention Atsushi. But he's like, there. he's the reason... Which is kind of funny because Mori makes the comment that Dazai was wanting to take his place as the leader eventually. So he's like, out of everybody, the one that the would be leader is the one that saved us all, and I'm the current leader, and I have nothing to show for it. I couldn't prevent all these deaths. Hmm. 
And then, of course, Koyo. I love that they send Koyo to give the invitation. They're like, well, we're done with you. And Kyoka is somewhere out there, so you go find her. Have fun with that. But, yeah. Here's your invitation to tea. And, of course, Mori. I, one aspect about Mori I really like is that he reads strategy books. Like, his whole thing is about game theory and strategy and theorizing. And he instantly knows what the invitation is for. He's like, mm. And then we backtrack eight years ago. So the flashback arc was four years ago. So this is four years before that. So if Dawes Eyes 22, then he would have been 14 when this is all going on. Like 14 years old. Like that's, that's insane to me, a 14 year old. Like a kid, just a 14 year old, a young adult. And he says, doctor, tell the board this is an order. So at the time, Maury eight years ago. So Maury had only been the leader of the Port Mafia for four years before Dazai left. So he's only been the Port Mafia leader for eight years. Um, and I get that he was like the Port Mafia's doctor at that time, it looks like. Or maybe he was the local neighborly physician. We don't know. But he says this is an order to kill all enemy organizations, military police, and anyone who opposes the Port Mafia by sundown. Which is such a... Yeah, he says that's irrational. You can't do all that. And this guy looks... He looks old and frail and looks out of his mind. It's like, that's irrational. I don't mind how many of our own need to die. Kill them. Just kill them. Kill them all. And he just keeps repeating it. Ah, uh, and he says, very well, boss. So clearly he was like the Port Mafia's doctor, physician, and then just took his place. And just, yet yeah, right to the jugular. The boss has succumbed to illness. Just as that blood's going everywhere, he left a will entrusting me with his position as the boss. And Maury's face. Oh my God. You're the witness. Understood. So there's a couple things here. One, Maury looking freakishly creepy. Two, that big giant moon, that big old blood moon that we've seen symbolic in this show is right there. But then also Dazai, as the kid, as a 14-year-old kid, with eyes that look just as creepy and distraught as Maury's. And he's got the same bandage over his cheek and over his eye. Hmm. And he just has the dead shark eyes. So that's interesting that you're the witness. Like his protege. Interesting! And then we cut to the fan, the little, the weather vane. Of Dazai looking at it and it being red just like that moon. That's a great symbolism. I love the symbolism of it. It's so good. And so, yeah. And um, so Dazai gave him the black coat. And then, so Mori gave Dazai the black coat. And he's like, oh, I burned it. <laughs> like, I got rid of it. And took a coat that looked like uh, Oda's. And then, of course, the hologram, the president there. Fukuzawa Yukichi. But he gives him a longer name in this. It's a longer name than just Fuku, Fukawa Yukichi. So the two of them there. Mm. The government brass were to find out that the leaders... So yeah, the, so the president's worried that the, the gifted association, the gifted organization is going to find out, or Maury's thinking that, that the gifted organization is going to freak out if they find out they made an alliance. And I find it interesting that the president says a new member to the agency proposed the alliance, but he doesn't say that's sushi. And I wonder if Maury's going to be able to figure it out. I wonder if he is, or if he already knows. And the president's like, I didn't agree. Because, yeah, obviously, working with the Port Mafia does not, uh, <laughs> does not bode well with the agency because you guys have been enemies for all this time. But he says the proposal came from someone who countless times has been shot, slashed, and kidnapped by the Port Mafia. So, so that narrows things down. They're probably figuring out it's at Sushi. I'm sure if Octagawa was there, he'd been like, I know who that is. His words carry weight. So it's like, if someone that has been constantly attacked by you all and should hate you is proposing that we form an alliance, then there has to have, there has to be a meaning or an importance behind that theory. As the leader of the agency, I was left no choice but to lend it. So he's just, he's just there to hear Mori out. And he says, well, we're both in quite a difficult position. Which, I love that Maury frames things like that when he was talking with Engo and the special ops president. He's like, we're in quite a difficult situation. So he just tries to word things so specifically. And then the president's like, I'm not here for your flowery language. I'm not going to get to the point. 
So he's like, alliance aside. So even even if we're not going to form an alliance, we still need a ceasefire during all of this. And Mori's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, no. And then he brings up the game strategy, Kissinger, and the game strategy books. And Dazai, of course, knows who he's talking about. And the president's like, well, I've read Sun Tzu before. And he's like, we're not having a ceasefire. He's like, because that's helping you. It's not helping us. He's like, what happens if you all betray us? What happens if things get worse? He's like, we have a ceasefire. We can't protect ourselves. And he lists all the things that are bad about that idea in his view. Um, and so he's like, the party entrusted in the agreement would be the only one to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. It's circumstances that reward the first to cause a betrayal. He's like, mm -mm, we need just complete cooperation instead. And then the pre and Daza is like, well, that's not going to happen. He's like, the Port Mafia is an organization of face and resentment. He's like, we're we're not going to be a, in a ceasefire here. And then he's like, my people have been dragged through the mud. Why are why are we the ones that are going to have to suffer even more? And he's like, well, mine have been brought to the brink of death as well. And that look on Maury's face where he's like, but they didn't die. I was like, oh, like his face is so, his face gets so creepy in this episode. And so does Da's eyes. And it's like, y'all, it, it's funny because back in episode one, I was like, man, Da's eyes is a great protagonist. He's just a force of good, right? And you people in the comments were like, force of good? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> I get it now. I get it. Um, and I'm sure there's still more to even be going. And he's like, it's a source of shame to the mafia that we haven't killed you all. And so then the president brings out his sword. And I'm like, okay, we're doing this here and now. We're just going to settle things. And he takes everybody out, it seems. Or at least his power seems to. But Maury, with that damn scalpel to the throat. And I'm sorry, but mark me down as terrified and aroused with Maury Senpai's, uh face when he's like, I thought you discarded your katana. So it's interesting, which I wonder if that's part of the illusion too. And he says, Kokinshi Ginro Fukuzawa. So I wonder if there's a significance to him having a longer name, to his name changing. So it's Kokinshi Ginro Fukuzawa instead of uh, Yukichi. So I'm wondering if that's like, I want to look him up now. So maybe for episode 10, I'll look him up perhaps. And see if I see anything, but maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait. You guys will probably tell me to wait. Um, but I'm wondering if that's like his pin name is the shortened version and his real name is the longer version, and that's part of it. Um, but I'll probably wait because we haven't seen his power yet. But I clearly he knows who he really is, so that's interesting. But that face, and then the president being like, and you still haven't grown past your habit of killing people with a scalpel, Dr. Mori. So they know each other from the past. That's interesting. Killing people with a scalpel. So he's a serial killer. Cool. You still think like a little girl. Ew! It, what does that mean? How does that work? And then him being like, and you still talk to cats. <laughs> so, ah. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with Sensei? The, the calico cat? Maybe? Maybe that has something to do with Sensei? Interesting, interesting. I'm curious, I'm curious, don't spoil me. But man, these two at each other's throats. Oh my gosh. And here's the thing. You would think that Mori would have noticed that it was an illusion because he's seen Tan Tanazaki's power before used back in episode 12. But he's like, oh, it was just a hologram ability. Cool. <laughs> he's like, well... This was fun, but done now. Bored. <laughs> Bored, done now. And so then Dazai's like, well, we're going to be recovering Q tonight. And the president's like, don't get in our way for both of our sakes. And I like that he's like, this is our sole similarity. We both love this city. And that's what I was saying last episode. They both have a commonality that they... They protect the people within the or within the city for their organizations. We don't want some foreign group coming in trying to raise it and burn it to the ground. And Mori's like, well, the guild's powerful. They don't stand a chance. So, bye. Have fun with that. Dazai, if you want to come back to the agency, you to the Fort Mafia, you always can. And Dazai's like, no. You're the one who kicked me out of the Port Mafia in the first place. And I find that line interesting because Mori's like, oh, I thought you quit because you wanted to. And then, yeah, 
Ah, uh, that look. Dazai with those dead eyes. God, I can't take it. But him saying, you were afraid I would someday aspire to take your position and put a knife to your throat, just as you did to your predecessor. And then, and then of course, of course, oh, Maury has that smile, that crooked, twisted smile. And I'm glad that we get the elder man in the background. We'll get to him in a second. But... Evil expects evil from others. He's like, of course you're going to kick me out because he thought I'd kill you. And then we cut back to the past with Maury and the elder man. And Daza's like, I think that was Daza that said, I don't agree to allying, allying with you either. I like that the old man here has been with the Port Mafia longer than the previous boss, which is interesting. And Maury's like, you've been here quite a long time. And so the the older man, he points out that the organization was in disre disrepair and was in ruins. And that the old boss before Maury had just erratically just ordered things and caused ceaseless violence. And that sooner or later it would have destroyed everything. And he's like, if you hadn't taken over, everything would have been destroyed. And I like that Maury's still, Maury's still creepy. He's like, what's your point? And he's like... Dazai understands your intentions. Mm -hmm. So this is in the present. This is in the present time. I thought for a second we'd flash back to the past, but this is the present. And so the older man is saying that Dazai knows what you're planning. He knows exactly what's up. So, you know, there's a reason behind all of this. And he knows what you're going to do. Which is fun. Which also explains why he just showed up. Because he knew that they were going to send Chuya. So I, it's just like a 3D game of chess. It's just going round and round with this group. And Dazai and them. It's just a big 3D game of chess. And Dazai and Mori and the president are like, what do we do? And then the guilds just happen to be there too. But man. Ah, the whole. And then we have the thing with Steinbeck and Lovecraft. And St Steinbeck, his ability is creepy. And powerful, but with Dazai there, it's like, what are you going to do? Even if Dazai Kuhn didn't intend to dethrone me, my decisions were rational and optimal. And I love that he's like, and I have no regrets. But if Dazai Kuhn had still been my right-hand man, the guild would have been no match. I love that face. That face that he looks as he goes and touches the wall that had the blood splattered all over it. He's like... He's like, I know why Dazai left, and I get it, but if he had been my right-hand man still, we would have already taken care of this, and the guilt would have been gone already. So you can tell he's kind of resentful there that Dazai left, and that maybe he had a part in that. Evil expects evil from others. Yeah, it's like he doesn't trust anyone because he knows what they're capable of. And I like that we have the moon again, but it's not the blood moon, it's a blue moon now. Hirotsu san, the communicator for the front line. So Hirotsu is the older man. And you can tell like they have the most trust in each other. Despite what I said to the agency, there is a rational path towards a proper alliance. Yeah, so it's like it, it's like Mori understands that the alliance is necessary to stop the guild, but he does not want to have a ceasefire, and he realizes the agency has to operate a certain way because they're upheld to a certain standard, and the Port Mafia is not on that same standard. So the ceasefire is not going to work, because that's disadvantageous to them. That's not a good strategy, because that's going to put them in a weaker place. And Maury's not about that. So he's like, we can do an alliance. It's just going to be an off-the-books alliance. It's going to be an alliance between... The president doesn't need to know these things. And the funny thing is, Dazai, going into that meeting, knew exactly what Maury was going to do. He knew that the alliance wasn't going to happen the way that the president wanted it. He knew... He intentionally planted the seeds of saying, oh, well, we're going to go get Q tonight, so... If you want to help, you can. Off the books, if you want to. I'm just telling you where. Here's my address. Here's where I'm going to be. If you want to just stop by, I'm just saying. Like, he's just giving him all the info because he knew Maury was going to act on it because it was too good of an opportunity to take advantage and stop the guild. Like, that's just too, too good. So, advance payment is the essence of an alliance. So, the advance payment. One pays a loss up front and a profit is made a hundred times greater. Hmm. 
Only then can the Alliance make up for old grudges. So I'm guessing, are they saying if you take Lovecraft out, then we'll, we'll, that'll be part of our payment up front? My question is, these troops, he said that anybody he touches is affected. So when he touch all these troops, their alliance was called the most devastating rivalry in history, an alliance for one night. That's sad. I want it to be for more nights. <laughs> when I'm done taking out the trash every night. I'm sorry, but okay. All right. I totally get why y'all ship Chuya and Dazai so far. I get it already. I get it already because their their banter back and forth was fantastic and hilarious. But they also, okay, they shout and yell at each other a lot, but they clearly, like, their chemistry is great throughout this whole battle because they complement each other, his power with gravity and Daz eyes to, it doesn't seem like it would go together. You're like, it's gravity and disabling abilities. It doesn't seem like it totally matches up correctly, but it does. It's weird. And then Maury saying, let's take back our lead. It's our common front against the guild, the launch of our retaliation. Interesting, double black. So I'm guessing Maury's like, well, since we're using a former executive that's going to keep this under wraps, this is going to give us the advantage because we're taking out guild members, but we're not compromising. It's a win-win for Maury. Again, he's like, we get to take out the guild members, but we also don't have to do anything the president wants us to do. So we're still staying true to our nature, but we're getting the job done. So, of course, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This show and its moons. <laughs> but, yeah, so... The worst day in years. I And so then they talk about, I, I love the banter where Daz is like, oh, I put a bomb under your car. And he's like, that was you. And he's like, I drank this fancy wine after you left because I was so happy that you left. And it was just like, these two. I absolutely love it. That was your doing? I can't stand you. And I hate everything about you. It's like, just kiss already. <laughs> Except for your taste in shoes. Mm hmm So here's the thing that's interesting. They find Q. And both of them. I, and I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the line, I'm familiar with your attacks, your taunts, your thrusts. Oh, you had to translate as that crunchy roll, did we? Is that exactly how it's translated? Okay. Choosing your words carefully, Dazai. Of course you are. <laughs> so here's the thing. We get down to Q. And we established back in episode 7 that Dazai does not like Q at all. Does not like Q. And it's established here that Chuya doesn't like Q as well. And so they use the Sleeping Beauty an analogy of, you know, waiting for their savior. And Dazai stole Chuya's knife. And then Dazai trying to figure out, being like, so are you going to stop me from killing this kid? And this is where it gets interesting. Because... Dazai's like, look, I don't like this kid. I could hold this knife up and kill him. What are you going to do? And Chuya does say that Mori wants the kid back alive because obviously it's, it's something that they can use. But Chuya also says that I've had flashbacks of people in body bags, people from my people because of his curse. So he's like, just go ahead and kill him. And Dazai, like, they're dead shark eyes. God. And Chuya makes the comment, he's like, you've gone soft, and you're a hypocrite. Because I'm assuming, da well, Dazai's killed people before. He's murdered, like, a hundred and something people. And Chuya's like, you just said you were going to kill him, and now you're going back on your words. And Dazai's like, well, technically, I'm not dumb. He's like, I could kill him, but then you wouldn't need my ability anymore, and so this is insurance to make sure that you don't just take me out now. So it makes sense, from a logical standpoint, why Dazai wouldn't kill him. But also, has he changed a little bit? That's the question. That's the question, of course. And so then we have the thing with Lovecraft. Lovecraft, not human. Nope, this is like E.T. This is like E.T. phone home. Lovecraft just wants to go home. It's like Fitzgerald's taking his, his ability and manipulation of other people to like a new extreme. Because in the last couple episodes, we established that people were working for Francis because they were in debt and they owed money and they just wanted security for their families. 
But with Lovecraft's case, it's like he's a literal alien, a literal being that's non-human that Fitzgerald has promised would let him go home if he worked for him. That's messed up. How? How even? And so creepy. So very, very creepy. Like Cthulhu on acid. Like, ugh. And so Dazai lets himself get hit by the tentacles, I'm sure at this point, to figure out that it's not a human thing. It's not an ability because he can't stop it. And here's the thing. For all their banter back and forth and all their yelling and being like, I hate you, I want you to die. Chuya runs to Dazai like, are you okay? And says he's hurt. It's like, Chuya, you're the softy. You're a softy for Dazai in this. Come on. And so them trying to figure things out. It's like, they make a pretty darn good team, which is the thing. Uh, and so, just like Lovecraft has this kind of inhuman ability, we find out that Chuya, that these, these abilities can have kind of like contracts to them almost. And so the true form of Chuya's ability is like this almost like berserk mode where he can just, is a pure force of destruction, but he has no control over it. So it makes total sense why him and Dazai were such great partners because you have this insane, this insane destructive ability and the only one that can stop it is Dazai. So they're perfect together. And I'm sorry, you had Chuya going up to him asking him if he was okay and then you had Dazai with this flirty grin being like, have I ever been wrong? And it's like, and Chuya's face afterwards just like, damn it. <laughs> I just, oh my god, they're, they're the combo between these two. I'm all about it. I want to see more of it. Maury said this is a one-time reunion. I don't want that. I want more Chuya and Dazai things in the future, please. But yeah, he's taking off the gloves, letting his ability like take over him like with all these different things. Ugh. The devastating rivals. And Dazai, ugh. And Dazai gets that dead look in his eyes. And then he's like, if I'm late to support you, you'll die. So what are we going to do? And Chuya's like, oh, you're going to let me pick? Ah. And he says, whenever you say that, I don't actually have a choice. It's like, ah. So it's amazing. He says, granters of dark disgrace. It's like a chant almost. You need not wake me again. Oh, and yeah, it's like all over him. Creepy. So I want to know more about these abilities that have like special circumstances surrounding them. I find that very, very interesting. That true abilities can have true forms. Very, very interesting indeed. Of Chia's gift. Hmm. But yeah, so it's such an establishment between these two that that Dazai's gonna relinquish the power of Chuya's gift at the right time so he doesn't die. So there's so much trust built into that. Because if he doesn't do it at the right time, he'll just lose all his energy and die from it. So it's like, you're, you're trusting your life in, with someone else. So, it, I mean, it takes a lot to trust one person and he trusts Dazai, so. I ship it is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> I get it, I get your ship now. And I want to see more of it. So don't spoil me, but I'm really excited if we get more of it later on in this series. And then, of course, they they kill Lovecraft from within. They put a bomb in him and they kill him. And then, I guess, take Steinbeck out, too, in the process. So, yeah. Hmm. I love it. And then he just left Chuya for Mori to pick back up. And he's like, okay, we killed Lovecraft. And I guess they took Steinbeck hostage, perhaps. Maybe the, the agency, agency took Steinbeck. But I'm sorry, that little fist bump to the chest at the end, and he says, you got it, buddy. Is it love, damn it? I think it might be. Yeah. I I was, it's funny because I was shipping Dazai and Oda, and Dazai and Oda are a different kind of ship than Dazai and Chuya. Totally different, totally different, totally different. It's kind of like if you like Haikyuu, some people ship Sakusa with Ushijima, and some people ship Sakusa with Atsumu. And they're totally different ships. Like the, the Sakusa Ushijima ship is like Dazai and Oda. The Sakusa Atsumu ship is like Dazai and Chuya. 
they're both fine. They're both great for different reasons. And I ship both of them. So there we go. <laughs> but man, this was such a good episode. These last three episodes, seven, eight, and nine, and along with three and four, have been some of my favorite in the series. And we have three episodes left of this season. And I'm really curious how everything's going to go down. But y'all, I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that this reaction lagged. I'm very sorry that Crunchyroll was lagging on this. And I'm sorry if my thoughts are like scattered. But I'm just like in such a state of euphoria. I just, I love this episode. And I can't wait to go rewatch it again. I've, re I've watched it twice now. So I'm going to rewatch it a third time. So yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. But I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Please don't spoil me, but I'm curious to know what you all thought of episode 9. And next week, I'll be back with episode 10. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you all again real soon.